I played for my dad in one tournament in Los Angeles. Um, we played an LA team that was a lot better than my San Diego team. All my buddies that I grew up with surfed and skateboarded. So they weren't really great basketball players. My dad said he'd coach one of our teams. It was actually not AAU at that time. It was junior Olympics. Yeah, my, da my, Olympics. My, my dad got thrown out in the first, uh, first half. And then he was outside in the parking lot. And then I came out midway second half. Cause I got tossed in the second <laughs> half. Um, and I joined him sitting in a car until we took the rest of the crew back to San Diego. Like father, like son. I love it. it uh, what type of play were you? Not very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think anytime you're five foot seven and a buck 48, you're not going to have a real basketball uh, future. But I, I was on scholarship at the University of San Diego. We made two NCAA tournaments. It was the first two NCAA tournaments that USD had played in my freshman and senior year. Um, so I was a third point guard uh, on some really, really good teams. But I had two great college coaches um, in Hank Egan and Jim Bravelli. Uh, Jim Bravelli later went on to be uh, interim head coach of, of the Washington uh, Wizards. And obviously Hank Egan coached uh, Mike Brown, who went on to be the head coach of, of some NBA teams, as, as well as he coached Greg Popovich at Air Force. And Coach Egan was also an assistant coach uh, he was my assistant in Golden State. He was Mike Brown's assistant in Cleveland, and he worked for Greg Popovich in San Antonio. So my college coach actually was an assistant coach for three of his former players who went on to become NBA head coaches. Wow, that's a pretty unique experience. Now, hold on, Coach, before you get too far. There is a, a, a – you got drafted by the Albany Patroons. I did. See, there you go. They but there's a – but there's a caveat to that. The coach of the Albany Patroons was Bill Musselman. <laughs> <laughs> so that, he would have got he would have gotten in trouble maybe uh, uh, by by the family if he didn't take you in. Is yeah, I think so. I think all the hours that he spent out on the playground with me, he he decided to throw me a crumb and draft me. I didn't even go to training camp. Are you kidding me? That is a great story. I didn't know that part of the story. That is, <laughs> that is phenomenal. So, could you play for yourself right now for the Hogs? If if there was if there was a, a young Eric Musselman coming up, and he said, "My dream is to play for the Hogs, Coach." As a walk, i I definitely wouldn't use a scholarship on myself. I can tell you that. I like big bigger guards. <laughs> so you um, you started in the in the CBA and went all, all through the ranks, ended up, which was actually funny reading through your stuff. You were at the Memphis Grizzlies when we had started the Arkansas Rim Rockers, which was the D-League. Uh, so you guys would send us players all the time. Anthony Roberson, you guys sent us uh, a, f a, few, a few other guys from, from Memphis. So I had to take that. I was working for the Rim Rockers at the time. I had to take that drive back and forth to Memphis to pick up some of those guys. <laughs> Because when you sent them, they didn't want to show up at Little Rock, Coach. <laughs> no, they want to stay with the parent team. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I was in charge of giving out the per diem. And the regular D-League D guys getting like you know, 35 bucks. A little, that's a little different than the 150 they were getting for per diem up in Memphis. <laughs> well, then, and, then, and then the NBA guys that came on assignment, I'd have to give them, you know, the, the 150 in – and, but they would pay for the other guys, you know, when they had the chance. So that was good. What 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 was the decision for you to go from NBA head coach and just being in professional, a professional basketball coach, to then saying, you know what, I want I want to get into college basketball. It was really interesting, Pat, because you know I did it really late in my career. So when I graduated from the University of San Diego, I went and worked for the LA Clippers, um, and then that. From that time on, I was either in the, you know, coaching professionally in the minor leagues or as an NBA assistant coach or an NBA head coach. Um, but I made the decision um, after I got fired from the Golden State Warriors. I went assistant coach Memphis and then went back as a head coach to Sacramento. And so I felt like I had an opportunity to coach two NBA teams. I did a ton of research uh, after being let go by the Kings, and I said, there's not many people that get a third chance to be to be an NBA head coach. That was just a fact 
of the matter. And I didn't want to go back as an assistant coach at the NBA level for another three or four years and then hope of maybe landing a third chance. And um, so I spent three years doing TV uh, in the college game out on the West Coast, uh, as well as just reconnecting with my two sons at, at, at when they were at ages that they really needed their dad to be with them every single day. Um, and then from that point on, uh, I, I just I loved the college game from doing the TV games and and I would speak to teams when they came into the Bay Area about what it took to be an NBA player. And I love the attention uh, that a player would give you at the college age. You know, when you're talking to an NBA team, guys are tying their shoes, guys, you know, getting out of his chair. The college guys are zoned in. They want to learn. And I just felt, um, you know, that for me, I wanted to be a teacher um, and I wanted to teach the game of basketball. And so uh Spent, you know, two years at Arizona State as an assistant, a year at LSU, and then was 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 fortunate to get the uh, the head job at Nevada. So I guess my next question was the the compare some of the differences with coaching professionally and in college. And I guess teaching, the more opportunity to teach w- would be one of them instead of manage. Would that be a way to put it? Yeah, I think there's so many differences. Um, you know, first of all, just, to, you know, when you look at um, – a professional basketball player. Most of them married with kids. Uh, when I was coaching, some of them were right around my age because I got you know my opportunities at a really young age. Um, and so you have that player for about an hour and a half, um, and then that's kind of it. You don't really see them again. And and obviously at this level, it's about you know developing them as basketball players. It's about developing them as men, um, but you really don't have a lot of practice time in the NBA other than your training camp. And I think that's the big thing is at the collegiate level, you've got, you know, time to sit down individually with players and look at film. You've got time as a team to watch film Um, and just to travel in the NBA. You're getting in every night at two in the morning to the next city. You you know, you wake up, you go back to the gym. It's just, it's like a constant cycle you're on. Um, but, but really, to me, it was about wanting to teach and wanting to give back to the game. And, and uh, you know, I love being around, you know, I think being on a college campus, if you're an older guy like I am now, it, it just keeps you young. I mean, I love going to the football games. I go, love going to the baseball games on campus. And uh, I love the, the, the college family atmosphere, as does my family. 